Sunday, March 6, 2021, today on The Daily Review, we discuss a YouTube channel that is not fledgling or small. It's a nice big boy. It's Mark Lita's soft white underbelly with your host, me, Joe LaRocca, professor and occasional filmmaker. What's up, guys? How's, how's your weekend going? I hope it's going well. Uh, here's a YouTube show. I don't do this too much occasionally. If I, if I realize, hey, I'm watching a lot of this channel and uh, it's better than anything I'm watching on TV, that's when I usually go, let's talk about this guy or this channel or this lady or whatever's going on. So what this channel is is just uncensored interviews with people who are I, you would say, are probably on the fringes of society that are not, not oft talked about. And they give incredibly insightful, not heavily edited interviews where you just sit the person down and you talk to them, it seems like, for a few hours. And then you cut it into like a 30-minute piece of them just telling stories about what it's like to live, you know, away from society in a lot of situations or sometimes you know it's a lot about prison culture there's a lot about um like sex workers and drug addicts and like functioning drug addicts and uh veterans war veterans and stuff like that um and i i watched four yesterday and that's when i was like all right it's time to talk about this and i'd seen one or two before um, you know, like a year or two ago, I think I'm wrong. I'll have to change the title. I think it started several years ago. I thought it started just in 2020 or something, but I think it goes back to 2016 even. But I remember seeing one of these. I mean, like, wow, that was one of the best interviews I've ever seen. They just let the person talk, and the per- it was way more interesting because so many of the interviews we see now are either politically motivated, where they're very careful about what they're saying, or they're just writing partisan lines, or. They're saying something insane, you know, it's, it's it, like fucking lies, you know, like that, that, that kind of insane, not insane. Like, wow, that's so true. I can't believe it. Like, I, that's crazy. If someone lives like that. No, no, it's just like, uh, what does my boss want me to say? And then that's similar to the other type of interview we see, which is like the celebrity interview, which is very, very rarely actually personal. You know, it's like, I heard you went on a vacation, Meg Ryan. That's right. I went to the Seychelles or whatever, you know. I heard something funny happen to you when you were in the Seychelles. That's right, Jay, you know. So you just go, eh. And it's just kind of the same thing. And if you go on YouTube and you watch a couple interviews about, you know, with that actor or director about a certain movie, they say the same, like, two or three things. Even great, you know, because I, I understand it. I understand why. It's because you got to do, like, a thousand press junkets. You know, it's not like before where you could just go on Dick Cavett and be done with it or something like that. Go on Johnny and then uh, then that was it. But now you have, there's 50 million outlets that you have to kind of, you got to eat hot wings. You got to fuck and sing in a car you got to do all sorts of crazy shit just to promote your movie you know and uh some actors seem to love it some actors are like god damn i don't want i don't want to i don't want a jimmy fallon to have to smash a water balloon on my head filled with cottage cheese or something just to make my movie about the holocaust you know oh my god so these interviews are real they're as real as it can get you know and it is so fascinating because you get to learn. But the, he lets the people talk long enough for them to hoist themselves on their own petard, as they would say, which I believe is when your cannon blows back in your face. But you just give them like a, a, a you, you let them talk enough, and then you realize in the editing, you're like, oh man, they're making sure that you you that you get that he said, oh, you know, I went to prison, but I paid for my kids' education. Uh, You know, uh, all that drug money, you know, some of it I I got to keep and put in my daughter's name, and now she's almost, she's like six months away from being a nurse. And you're just like, okay. And you're like, that is, you know, because we all rationalize everything, you know, and, and to like, so that we don't go crazy and like fucking kill ourselves. It's to like bring some 
level of control into your life is you writing your own narrative, you know, and kind of adjusting things so they're not as miserable to deal with mentally. So he's obviously horribly guilty for all these mistakes he's made. And this this particular person was a skinhead. And, and at first I was like, oh, I thought he was going to be talking all about racial stuff. He doesn't really say anything racial basically the whole time. I mean, other than he joined the skinheads because in prison there were the prison he was in, there was the black gangs, the Mexican gangs, and the white gangs, and that's how you have to survive. And so he joined, you know, the white brotherhood of power or whatever. But he, he doesn't talk, he wasn't saying, you know, he wasn't, I mean, I'm sure he's fucking racist, but he, that wasn't like his MO. It was like a survival technique. It's like, gee, I wonder how different anyone would be if you were in a life and death, death situation and they were like, well, I could go over here and get murdered and shanked and maybe raped or some horrible, horrible thing. Or I can play cards with Heinrich and his white brothers. You might go, hmm. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, obviously, I, it's not the right way to go. Um, but, you you know, in a certain situation, you never know what you would do to survive. And that's what so many of these stories bring up. Like this one guy, he's got face tattoos like completely over it and it's like his way of kind of distancing himself from society and he has all these dogs and he just travels around he's like a drifter he calls himself a traveler and he just goes up and down the west coast like hiking and stuff and and the most important thing to him is these, these dogs and stuff but then when you know his kid he's like I wasn't a very good father but I did pay child support and you're like oh see he's re and this is a different guy it's like they make sure that people know that they're not like horrible you know and we i think we all do it though we all do it these people and the way these guys these people are being interviewed uh, elucidates a more elicit elicits a more um just honest reaction i think because of so many of these people been through so much shit that at a certain point your narrative (laughs) you might have to you might have to face re Uh, maybe people I don't know. I'm glad I coughed there because I was kind of losing my train of thought. Good. Okay. Anyway, um, there there is something important to be said though about this, about why storytelling is so important, why it's good to study it to a certain degree, because you're going to write your own story and narrate the events of your own life in your head back to yourself to uh, glorify or uh, maybe dilute certain events based on their trauma or the actions you took once you're especially once you're out of that extreme situation you look back and you go why did I do that that was insane you know that was like was I a madman but that's because you're so distance distance from you're you're not in like you know Viet Cong territory you know (laughs) like without sleeping for days on LSD or whatever you know not that anybody they haven't interviewed anybody like that yet uh, there was a the veteran that was one I was like I got to review this it was called it's the one I linked below uh, war veteran repeat holy crap my it's just the guy just instantly you see the guy and you're like this guy's got stories he's just going to jail going to the being in the navy being a scuba diver being an underwater welder joining the army you know uh, uh, like. <laughs> becoming a big drug dealer at one point and he's getting and, and and the cops are driving after him and he's throwing bags of of heroin i think it was or cocaine out of the car window whenever he's like turns a corner where the cops can't see and then one hits the window and breaks and there's like fucking drugs all over the car and he's throwing guns out the window to try and like he's like i know i'm gonna get caught but if i get caught with all of this stuff You know, I'm trying to reduce my sentence, you know, even though fleeing the police, I think, is going to not add a good amount. Uh, But but he tells a story about this big dude called Country who was going to who was basically like, I am going to have sex with you tonight. You're going to be my bitch. And he's like, oh, my fucking Jesus Christ. All right. So then he that night he gets in the guy's room and asks for them to shut the cage door. And they shut him in there, and he goes, fuck, ah, 
He just goes crazy and fights the guy and it bites him, bites him three times, like bites chunks out of him and they're fighting, he says, for an hour. And then at one point he is punched him in the dick and he's grabbing his dick and he was going to try and bite his dick. He's like, I just wanted to get a little, ah, a little bite. And you're like, it's funny, but it's in, but it's insane. It's horrible at the same time. And I was like, oh my god, this guy move. This guy's got movies just dropping out of him. And his hands, he, he was in an explosion. His hands are all big and kind of strange looking um, because they've been through trauma and stuff. But it, uh, they tell so much story. And then my favorite part about it, and this is the thing, this is the stuff that I love best about this show, is that he's just wearing a backpack the whole time. They don't talk about it. He doesn't say. It, and it's just like, oh, this guy, like. You know what I mean? That must be like, that must give him some level of security. Like, this guy doesn't go anywhere without, and he lives in a tent outside. So it's like, this is his life. He's like a turtle now. He's like, everything is on my back. And he doesn't talk about that. It's just the way that they, and they don't even bother doing a close-up. They just change the angle at one point, and you're like, oh, yeah, he does have a backpack on. And then you're like, he's had that, it's not, you know, like, they've definitely, the interview's been a few hours long, probably, or two hours long, and he's just, I don't know, just, you know, it's so much better than in a narrative movie, you know, starring like Vin Diesel. He'd be like, this backpack is my life. This backpack is my family, you know. And you'd be like, Ugh. instead of finding a visual way to tell the audience, oh, this backpack is his life, you know. He'll just say it, which is like just lazy. And it's not using the tools of cinema to their most effective degree. And that is when you combine the audio and the visual in an artistic, meaningful, well motivated way. And now you're going to say, well, him saying it, that's audio. No, exposition is not audio. It's a bullshit. Anyway, um, so yeah, I, I, I hope you check out one or two of these. You know, maybe um, just find a topic that you're fairly interested in, whether it's mental health or drug abuse or, um, you know, PTSD or anything or victims of all sorts of kinds and these give you a really depthful interesting view and they don't it's just the interview maybe there'll be like one or two pictures that's it so this guy is doing it right in my opinion last one i'll talk about um is the whitaker family from odd west virginia and they're inbred and there's this one guy and he, it's so sad man it's like insane he can only like bark I know it sounds funny, like when you say it out loud, it's like, oh, <laughs> it's a barking guy or whatever. And it's like, no, man, he, yeah, but it's not like when you see it, you wouldn't laugh. But if I, if I tell you about it, it sounds like, oh, it's this guy, he barked. But like, no, it's like he's trying to communicate and his brain is so like fucking scrambled that all he can do is go. Ruff, 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 and you're like, what? Oh, what a nightmare, dude. Whenever you think your life is bad. Fucking watch one of these videos, dude, and go, at least I'm not, like, 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 textbook definition of, you know, losing it. All you can do is bark and grumble, and it's him just pointing at the, the grave of his brother who died, and they just buried him in the yard, and you're going, roof, roof. fucking crazy, man. Man, uh, anyway. Wow, long episode today. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, oh, I'll review the channel. I mean, I don't know if you can get really any better than this as a YouTube channel, in my opinion. Um, but I'm not going to give it... You know that A-plus is reserved for, like, the big boys, you know? Uh, nothing's gotten A-plus. Very few things will ever get an A-plus. Um, I think... Um, they're really... And remember, when I review things, it's all... Bit, like, I might give a horror movie... That's kind of silly, but a very good horror movie, a high grade, and then a drama that you might be like, well, it's way better than that horror movie, but like, oh no, as all, you know, anyway. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a pretty big grade, guys. Because I don't, I wouldn't change anything about it. It's perfect. If this is the thing you're into, it's what this guy is trying to do, and he's perfectly doing it, and there's tons of content, and it's maturely edited, and it's not overly manipulated. So, uh, I really think it's one of the better channels I've seen in a really long time. Next to that guy who talked about Saturday Night Live. <laughs> uh, it's better than that, sorry. Um, anyway, thank you guys. Remember, like and subscribe. We're, gonna, we're trying to get to 900 before, uh, before the 9th, which would be nice. So a couple more days. we got to get a few more subs, but I'm always going to lose a few too. So. <laughs> Ooh, it's a wild ride. Before you know it, I'll be one of these interviews by Mark because I'll be just wandering the streets of L.A. or something. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, with just birds all over me. Be, oh, he's, it's Birdman LaRocca. And I'll just be going, chirp, 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 sun piss. He used to teach at college. <laughs> I'll be in the alumni magazine. All right, guys. I will talk to you soon. Watch this if you want to learn about the human condition and maybe even about yourself. Have a good weekend.